Hey y'all, Rhonda here. Oh my goodness. Pink Fresh has done it again. They have this system that is like stamps, dyes, stencils, washi tape, or some of them are just uh, stencils and dyes. Some of them are stamps and stencils. I mean, they have a whole array of combinations there. But anyway, this is one of their newest ones. This is called, there's Fall Leaf Border Sentiments Gazebo Fall Foliage, Fall Leaf Border. So it's fall. <laughs> So, oh my goodness, this one is, this is the stencils for this foliage. And then, oops, oh, and then here's the die that cuts them all out. So there are actually four stencils in this, layering stencils. Here's the die to cut them out. And then here is the gazebo. That is so cool. Loving that. And then they have this border. This one. I'm loving this. And then it also has words. So there's gratitude, thank you, grateful, uh, grateful for you. Loving that. And then here is the dies that cut out the sentiments. Oh my gosh, I love fall. I love fall colors. <clears throat> so I think we're going to work with this one. That's the idea, um, and I was thinking about it because, you know, the colors. It's all about the colors. So I have several picked out here. I have Speckled Egg, um, Abandoned Coral, Aged Mahogany, Tea Dye, and Crackling Campfire. Okay, let me get these back in an order so I'll know what I'm doing here. All right, so I have my... Um, trusty Musty Dusty Make Art Station. It's, so it's a metal plate and um, there's a magnetic ruler and then the magnets that hold things down and I mean are they strong? Oh my gosh. So this is great for stenciling. So you don't have to do all the taping and everything. So let's get these babies out. Maybe. Maybe. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> All right, now there's no way you can see these, but up here, etched in this plastic, it says stencil one, there's stencil two, three, four, and five. You can't see those. Oh my gosh, I mean, you have got to really work the light and try to figure out what the what is. Because it makes a difference if it's like this or like this, plus you need them in order. <laughs> so, um, why is it that I always say so, so much on my videos, but I never say it just in everyday life. Who knows the things that we do, really? I know. Um, take some acrylic paint or something and put a little bit on your finger and just rub that and then wipe it off and then acrylic paint will get down in that little stencil area. So then you should be able to see it without having to, you know, get your spectacles on and get it in the light and all that. All right. <clears throat> I was thinking we would do a slimline. Even though this is not a slimline size, we can just repeat the pattern. Get the, oops, things are falling. All right, let's get this tacked down. Get it kind of lined up a little bit here. See, is my paper straight? Probably not. Nope, let's line up this side. This side is straight. All right. You can use your ruler to hold it down. You have your magnets. All right. Let's get the first stencil. I mean, this is pretty state state straightforward. If I can speak. Okay. We're just going to line it up in that corner. Put a magnet or two on there, or three, and that way it's not moving. Let me turn this light out. There is too much glare. How about that? Oh well, we're gonna have to live with that one. All right, let's get our brush here. I'm gonna see which one is I've used for the blueish. Come here. Oh, I don't know. All right, I usually have a rag, just an old kitchen rag. 
and that's how I clean them. Just around and around, this way, that way, and back and forth. So obviously that has a lot of red. This probably has a lot of red. That has a lot of red. I don't know what I do with... I was using one for the blue. That's why it's a lot of times put a piece of colored paper on here and tape it on there so you can kind of keep track of like reds and blues and yellows. All right, we can use this one for the blue. I usually don't wash these. I, I've never washed these. This is so dense. They do not shed. Um, this is actually picket fence brushes. Uh, this one is a uh, couture, couture, couture Creations. <laughs> Say that three times. Uh, but most of these are the picket fences. But they're, it's so dense that the ink does not get down in there. And um, if you wash them, it's going to take a long time, like several days, to dry. I'm not saying you can't wash them, but just make sure you're done with them for a while. But this is how I clean them, and no reason to wash them yet. And I use them quite a bit. All right. Let's put this out of the way. Is that my blue one? Let me see. Maybe this was my blue one. It looks like it has a little schmutz on it. Okay, we can use that one for the blue. Or we can use that one. Oh, well. Squirrel. All right. So we're going to start with this. This is number one, and we're going to start with a speckled egg, and we're just going to rub it on there, and you don't have to rub hard, and usually you come in from the side and go in, so you have a little more control as far as the color and shading. I want that fairly dark. And, I mean, you could do each one of these different, whoops, hello, different colors if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. There's some little dots. I'll color those in. Like I said, you can concentrate on one side a little more to do a little more shading. Even it out a little better. And it's just... Whatever you like, your preference. Okay, and then these stencils just wash right off because this is oxide um, inks, distressed ink. All right, so remove that, set that to the side. And I suppose we could go ahead and drop down, but there's going to be more stuff down here, and I'd rather wait, um, do it all, and then start over again at the bottom just so I can keep everything in line. All right, number two. Line that up in the corner. And yeah, it's going to overlap some of these. It's supposed to. And next, we're going to go with Abandoned Coral. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. All right. Like I said, you can do this as dark or as light as you want. I'm going pretty dark because this is overlapping that blue and I want this to show up really well and this ink that's on there just kind of pull it to the side and work it in some more okay got that one done and I'm just going to continue on I'll do the next one this is going to add some detail to what we just did. And again, this could be different colors. Like I said, it's just your imagination. All right. Next, we're going to go in with Aged Mahogany. And this is going to be pretty dark because this is the highlights on some of these. And you see I'm going one way and then the other way. That's just so I can make sure to get in all of the little nooks and crannies there. Make sure you have it covered. And you can even, if you need to peek, 
flip up the corner, see what you have. All right, well, I'm going to continue to do this and layer it. Look at that. I am loving this. Okay, we'll just do it. I'll, I'll just go kind of quick. I mean, because it really is quick. Oops. I mean, you can make a card in no time flat, let me tell you. All right, tea dye. Go in with this. Oxides are great for blending. You can use inks, the uh, Distress inks, which are just fine. But if you're really going to do some heavy duty blending, you know, like color into color into color, um, I would say oxides because they blend so beautifully. All right, whoops, I forgot a spot right there. All right. And looks like we have one more. And that should add some detail to what we just did. Oh, now come on. Come on. <clears throat> I'm just lining it up in the corner. And we're, ouch. That's going to add detail to what we just did. So this is a crackling campfire. Let me wipe this off a little bit. I'm sorry if I'm shaking you there. You can throw this in the wash and it just comes right out. No worries. All right, let's get some of this. And again, we're going to go pretty dark with this because it's going to add the definition to some of this. I mean, this is really how quick you can make a card. I mean, this will get you spoiled on not coloring <laughs> at all. All right, looks like we have every, oops, two little spots right there, I almost missed. Don't do that. Ta-da! I love this colors these colors. I just love, love, love them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same process. No, I'm not going to rinse my stencils. No tea, no need to. Oh, I can't talk tonight. Okay. Put them back in order. I'm just throwing things. All right, so number one, and then what I'm going to do is just drop down a little bit, line it up on that side, and you can kind of guess to see how close you want it to that one. Okay, just put your magnets down. We can drop this down a little bit, just right there on the on the edge. Put another one down just for safekeeping. And we're just gonna start this process over again. I'm gonna get these back in order. Sorry for my sniffles and allergies. All right, and I'm just gonna do the same thing again just down lower so we can make this a long, long card. So I'll be right back. All right, I got it all finished. I think it looks, I just love it. Well, I got a little wild right there, but what are you gonna do? Um, I inked the edges up just a little bit to give a little more definition. I've cut a couple of mats. I have my slimline card, eight and a half by three and a half. Actually, seven scored at three and a half. Um, and I went ahead and put score tape on the back. So, Let's get this card together. I just love this. I mean, love, love, love. Of course, I, you know, the colors, the fall colors are phenomenal. All right, and what I do when I use score tape, turn a little edge down, get everything lined up, make sure that's where you want it, and hold it down firmly, and then pull that piece of score tape out Press that down, and you're good to go. You can pull the other side out, and of course, I'm on camera, so it doesn't want to cooperate. 
do the same thing. Burnish that down. And I love mats. I love, I think it just looks finished. I think it looks put together like you've really thought about it. Doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to finish it off. It's kind of like, you know, matching shoes, matching belt. I don't know, just adds a little something, something to, to it. Well, I want to say welcome to the new subscribers. I'm so excited. And uh, thank you for my regulars that thumbs up and comment and means the world to me. All right, and then it's gonna go on top. I'm loving this card. I can't wait to do the uh, gazebo and the other set, but I don't think we're gonna do these colors. I think we're gonna do something maybe a little wild, a little unexpected. I think that's what we're gonna do. Maybe some blues and purples or some pinks or I don't know. I'll have to look at my colors and give it some thought, And uh, but who knows? Maybe we'll do golds and reds. I don't know. I don't know. I'm loving it. I just think that is super sharp, except for my little boo-boo there. But, hey. And then, oh, I didn't even think. What do I do with my stencils? We could stencil in. What is it? Grateful. We could do a thank you. Stencil it and cut it out. We could put it across the top or we could stencil it on the inside. I think that's what I would do is just, I'm just grateful for you. That's just the perfect size. Stencil that in there. And then what I would do is take the envelope um, and stencil a little leaf on the outside or a couple little leaves just to finish it all off. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, pink fresh. Uh, I mean, this is how fast you can make a card. Is that not crazy? I mean, zippity doo dah, and you're done. And I, I, I'm loving that, you know, because there's a lot of times when you need a card quick. Um, so, <laughs> ooh, it's a beautiful sunset out there. Gorgeous. Anyway, all right. Share your craftiness with somebody. Send them a card. Let them know you're thinking about them. And uh, until next time, bye for now.